Sometime in 2017, I made a video called Why I Think Young Sheldon Might Suck. It got quite a response from people and it was the first time I received more dislikes than likes for reasons I could not get behind. It did make me question whether or not I was wrong about Young Sheldon and I tried to seek other people's opinions on the trailer that was released at the time but it ended up being unproductive and pointless. As for the comments, I did not receive one that was actually helpful in making me question my predictions for Young Sheldon, and as for my social circles, they mostly agreed that the show would probably suck, although for reasons slightly different from mine. During the period between the trailer release and the airing of the pilot, I kept thinking about the possibility of making a video of either me taking everything I said back and agreed that the show was at least competent, or making a video proving that I was right. The constant questioning made me unintentionally excited to see the show, even though I thought it would suck, and then September 21st came and I finally watched the pilot and it was a train wreck, which was funny because it was for reasons I did not predict. I highly recommend watching that video because it's basically the kickstarter of this video's narrative, and some of the points I made there will offer some context. Now, when I uploaded that video, the response was pretty positive, not a lot of dislikes and negative comments, but as the video gained more views, more young Sheldon and Big Bang Theory fans annihilated my video. I also read some reviews of the pilot and so many agreed that it was a good episode, which made me realize that there was a clear disconnect between me and everyone else in the world. Now, I have fun expressing unpopular opinions and I can enjoy participating in discussions about my unpopular opinions. Although, I've been holding back on Young Sheldon for quite some time, mainly because I don't have time or will to watch live action shows, especially bad ones, so I've been quiet over the course of nearly 6 months. But today, however, I'm lighting up the candles, I'm gonna finally open up about my opinions on Young Sheldon and hopefully, some people will agree with me. Probably not. I'll probably receive a lot of dislikes. Since I've already reviewed the pilot, I'm gonna start with episode 2, and I will say this, they did improve on one thing. The episode is massively more coherent. There's an actual main and linear plot, even if it wasn't one that particularly interests me. Mainly because it's about Sheldon trying to learn how to be friendly, which is something I've already seen in Friendship Algorithm from the Big Bang Theory. Except here, the performances were worse. I could not stand watching any of the adult authorities autistically complaining about their pitiful life. Which reminded me of something. You know, I've got a lot of comments from people defending young Sheldon, and if there's one defense I cannot fully grasp is that the show is funny. Try this. It's been around a while, but it's still quite popular. Unlike me. It's just been around a while. Hey, Sean. I am genuinely interested in you and would like to encourage you to talk about yourself, Billy Sparks. Thank you. You have the floor. Thank you. Really? This is what makes you roll on the ground laughing? Like, in my first review, I complained about the joke structure being too reliant on a following laugh track, which is non-existent, but after watching this episode, I realized that no, it's not just that. The humor is just atrocious, unfunny, and dreadful. Oh, and let's not forget the pinnacle of comedy, the last scene where the Vietnamese kid had a dinner with them and oh boy, I had never cringed so much in my entire life. That scene had some of the lamest, most idiotic attempts at Vietnam jokes. It's not even that I have a problem with Vietnam jokes, I, I don't care, but holy Christ, those jokes were really lazy. To be fair to them, they're at least maintaining the spirit of the original show since this is very common in the Big Bang Theory. There are a lot of cheap jokes based on the ethnicity of the characters. And then we also get a scene where we finally experience the all-so-infamous Uranium story, so... I guess that'll serve as fan service for all of you Big Bang Theory fans. I will say one thing nice about the episode. There's a scene where Sheldon exercises social skills with George, and even though Sheldon was just spatting out a bunch of weird stuff, George just went along with it, once again showing just how accustomed he is to Sheldon's ineptitude. The rest of the episode was just dumb and stupid. Don't watch it. The third episode starts with something somewhat interesting. We're introduced to Mima, Sheldon's favorite grandmother. And I will say this, based on this episode, 
I can kind of understand why Sheldon has a soft spot for her. For starters, she hung out with Sheldon more than the other kids, and during that time, she would teach Sheldon some stuff about people in general. Things like bluffing and predicting your opponent during poker, and even when Sheldon wasn't around her, the amount of enthusiasm she had when Sheldon was asked to talk with the pastor is just enough to show that they have a bit of a special bond. And in the following episodes, that would just prove my point. Also, I kind of admire her lack of sugarcoating, which offers this level of comfort and casuality. But besides that, what else can you say about the episode? Well, there's this pointless scene where that fat kid hints at some romantic interest in Missy, and then we witness just masterful comedy. Uh, hello, Mr. Cooper. Is Missy home? Hello, Billy. No, she's at church. I brought her eggs for my chickens. I see that. You can boil them or scramble them. Okay. I like fried. Okay. I don't like poached. Okay. We get two scenes where Sheldon challenges the beliefs of some insecure pastor, which was something I predicted would eventually happen in the show. But I will say this, I was kind of disappointed how Sheldon didn't initially win the argument. Actually, he made no articulated argument at all. I mean, I know he's nine, but isn't he supposed to be like a gifted genius who should already be capable of competently defending his science-based position? Well, I mean, I get why it ended up playing a small part in the narrative. I say this because in the last scene, he was slightly more argumentative. But whatever, let's get to the actual main story. So it's about George having a heart attack and being taken to the hospital. And then everyone starts freaking out, especially Georgie. And my god, I really missed Georgie last episode. I really miss his amateur, poorly emoted acting performances. And this time, he's slightly more annoying and decides to drive himself to the hospital. And both Sheldon and Missy agree with him. Okay? But my main issue with this episode didn't lie there. Like, I knew he wasn't going to die here, and not because he's in the main cast, but because I know exactly when he's going to die. I already know he'll die when Sheldon turns 14, so how the hell am I supposed to feel any tension? There are also not a lot of strong thematical implications. Like, I know him dying would be a big deal, but I wish I was shown how much of a big deal it would be. Because that way, even though I know he won't die, I can at least think about his death and the impact it would give to them. From what I saw, everyone was just naturally freaking out like anyone would. Hell, this experience could have even altered the dynamic of the family, either for the better or for the worse, but we didn't see that. There were scenes that had the opportunity of delivering that with lots of emotions, but they were tragically wasted. It just ended up being an almost basic plot with nothing thought provoking. I mean, hell, when I watched the episode for the first time, I wasn't 100% sure when he had the heart attack, it just suddenly happened. I guess one positive thing I can say is that the scene where Sheldon witnessed his father surrounded with doctors and medical stuff had a decent tone and directing style. It very much looked like a scene I would see from a competently directed drama show. Too bad after that, we switched to the usual camera work it always has that's not really that interesting to look at. Overall, just a bit better than the last one, but not good enough. Still really bad. And now we're in episode 4, and I will say this. Even though this was still a humorless fest, and there's this stupid therapist who offers some of the most awkward scenes that just made me miss the old days when I wouldn't waste my time watching unfunny garbage. Oh, and guess what? That kid from Vietnam returns. And then we get more unfunny Vietnam jokes. Ugh. <sighs> I will say this though, this episode was a lot better than the first three ones. This time, I was actually invested in the story because of two things, familiarity and understanding. The episode was about Sheldon almost choking to death, well sort of, which made him feel traumatic and refuse to consume any solid food. The reason why my satisfaction rose is because I know Sheldon and I know that he would freak out over something like this. Not to mention, I did appreciate how initially George and Mary were understanding until the next day when Mary was not okay with Sheldon not eating for more than 24 hours, which is understandable, but George decided to be a little more tolerable, which is what I've come to expect from him, in a satisfying way, and then Meemaw finds a solution for this problem, which is again, 
what I come to expect from her given her closeness to Sheldon. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this episode was an experience of reaffirmation of my understanding of these characters and also I could successfully relate to the situation. But there is one thing I want to address and it's about Sheldon's character. In my first ever video talking about young Sheldon, I expressed my concerns over Sheldon losing a side of him that makes him more humorously appealing. And the reason why I bring this up is that this is the episode where Sheldon first gained his interest and passion for comic books which was a reminder of how much of his appeal would be lost for the simple fact that he isn't a grown man anymore. And so far it's been 4 episodes and he's just not working for me comedically. Now I know Sheldon Cooper isn't the most beloved character, at least inside my social circles. Many people have accused him of being an annoying unfunny character and I do understand the criticisms, but I personally managed to find many situations where he's funny. He's admittedly very hit or miss and there are times when he can be very unwatchable, but for the most part Sheldon is a funny character, for me at least. But in young Sheldon, he's not funny. He's not as insufferable as he could have been, in fact I'm shocked at how I end up finding his character to be pretty tolerable despite many indications that he would be very annoying, but he's not funny and in this episode once again reflects that I really do believe it's for the reasons I mentioned in my first video on why I thought young Sheldon could suck. Also, minor nitpick, Sheldon said that Rogue's weakness was human contact, but that's horribly inaccurate. I mean, I guess it might depend on what people define as a weakness. I mean, I would instead say that Rogue's power, which is of observing someone's powers, memories, skills and others, just by touching them is a huge struggle because she has to carefully not touch anyone otherwise they'll lose conscious, which is an unfortunate side effect. But even then, that's not a weakness. She's not the one being weakened. She's actually gaining more strength, but whatever, this isn't very important. Overall, okay episode, although Missy here slipped in the acting performance. I was gonna die, so I was gonna die. Okay, so now we're in episode 5 and this is probably the point where it's decided whether or not this show is for you or not. The story is about Sheldon proving to be capable of making predictions for football matches and lotteries, and pretty much everyone except Mary decides to take advantage of his skill. And that's pretty much it, there is really nothing I can say about it, everything you would expect to see eventually happens. Everyone gets too greedy and takes advantage of Sheldon with a pure lack of decency, and by the end everything would go back to normal. The only way it's possible to enjoy this episode is if you're either already into the show's humor which means you can somehow handle scenes like this. How is puberty treating you? Because it is knocking me for a loop. Right? Just fantastic humor. Nice to know that even without the Vietnam jokes, he still has great material for comedy. Splendid. Aside from that, the other way you could potentially enjoy this episode is if you're already attached to these characters and would just accept any situation they're put in and I for one am not attached to these characters and if you fail to meet both these requirements I mentioned, this is where you should just let go of the show. I mean I personally dropped the show after watching the first two episodes and I only revisited it for the sake of reviewing the show. Oh and by the way, I find it massively hilarious how the episode wanted me to feel sympathy for Georgie, the guy who opened the episode by calling Sheldon a dumbass for no reason, the guy who watched Sheldon choke on his food and not give a single fuck about it. Yeah, sorry I'm incapable of expressing any sympathy for this man. Overall thoughts? Just drop the show and let me go through the pain. Then we get to the 6th episode and from the very beginning I already knew what it wanted to be. The episode was about Sheldon trying to find a method of landing rockets after someone from NASA shut him down and wouldn't take his ideas seriously. So out of spite, Sheldon spent the entire episode trying to prove that guy wrong and by the end of the episode his ideas were proving to be great and it was revealed that in the last act taking place in 2016 that Elon Musk basically stole his ideas which ended up being a massive help for the SpaceX CRS-8 mission. In the very beginning in the episode, I already knew exactly what it wanted to accomplish. The episode wanted us to be impressed at Sheldon's genius and laugh at how this 9 year old kid intimidated a bunch of smart adults from NASA. It was so obvious to me in the last scene of the second act how much of a badass it wanted to portray Sheldon as. I mean, whatever, like, I wouldn't call it a bad idea for a story and I'm sure many people who were excited to see this show 
or hoping to witness a scene like this, and I do not blame them at all for wanting it and enjoying it, but personally, I've seen enough of these written situations that I'm capable of predicting them and incapable of being amazed by it. Unless it's coming from a character that I really like, which even then, it might not have an effect on me. There's an episode of Community where a teacher told Abed that he cannot answer the question of who's the boss, and by the end of it, Abed proved that teacher in massive details that he has the answer. And look, Community is my favorite sitcom of all time, and I love Abed Nadir. But even then, that scene didn't have much of an effect on me because I knew from the very beginning how it wanted to end. So yeah, not a terrible premise, it's just not one that works for me anymore. I mean, it can, but it's very rare. Also, compared to the previous episode, Sheldon was more of a protagonist and the story was more centered on him, which means that we have to deal with his bad acting. Although at this point, with the exception of Mary and a bit of George, everyone pretty much sucks at acting. Just look at this scene. Oh god, it's on my shoes, it's on my shoes! For Pete's sake, somebody open a window. One final note I'd like to add is that there's this scene that felt very reminiscent of the Big Bang Theory, where Sheldon calls someone and we only experience the call from his perspective, and as he interacts with the other line, he reacts to the other person's responses by reflecting on them in a subtle way that allows the audience to have an idea of what the other line is saying, which is usually them being weirded out by Sheldon. It's not really a positive or a negative opinion that I'm giving, I just thought it was worth pointing out. Alright, we're 7 episodes in and this time it's not about Sheldon, it's about this dumb recipe for a brisket that Mima always makes and George really wants to know what it is, but Mima refuses. Oh and guess what, initially it just came across as a petty dispute, but turns out there were some hidden undertones and baggage involved in this dispute. Clever. I don't really have much to say other than the fact that I thought the last scene where the conflict got resolved was a little bit forced. Like even if I ignored the fact that Mima decided to talk about some heavy and personal stuff while the kids were around and Mary basically just gave up on trying to send the kids away from that conversation despite the fact that she has shown to have a short temper which could have motivated her to force the kids to leave the room but even if I ignore that. George pretty much said one or two sentences and that somehow managed to resolve the conflict and change her mind. You know, I'm not a fan of how the Big Bang Theory concludes their episodes, but at least whenever there's a conflict that can't be properly resolved in 19 minutes, they don't force the resolution. Besides that, everything I have to say about this episode, well, it's just mostly me recycling things I've said about the previous two episodes. Once again, we're 7 episodes in, and the show has just been a massive dump of disappointment. Actually, not really a disappointment, cause I kind of expected this. Whenever I experience the events, I just can't help but cry and slap myself in the face for not watching something else that would have been better executed and had more likable characters. I don't think I even really talked about how Missy and Georgie were annoying. They are meaningless and insufferable to watch, especially Georgie. Missy not that much, but Georgie really gets on my nerves. I don't care for them and they don't bring me joy, not even in the form of humor. I am very scared of what the next episodes have to offer. I'm not even afraid that they're going to be bad because, quite frankly, there are only a few episodes of Young Sheldon that I would consider to be absolutely terrible, but I am scared that those episodes will just end up being really bland with nothing interesting to offer that will just waste my time. Well, more than it already has. Anyway, see you in part 2. You're going to have to find someone else to torment on the playground. Torment? It means to maliciously harass. Harass? <laughs> That's funny. Well, this was nice. 